Hello, I am Paul Clausen. I work at the Institute of Cellular and Integrative Neurosciences at the University of Strasbourg, and I would like to highlight for you the key findings of our recent paper in the Journal of Neuroendocrinology on kispeptin, photopyrid, and sex steroid feedbacks. Ever since the discovery of its critical role in puberty, kispeptin has been a major interest for research teams such as ours studying seasonal breeding. Kispeptin action is usually quite straightforward. It triggers the release of GnRH at the hypothalamus, which then acts on the pituitary gland to release LH and FSH to stimulate the testis or ovaries. Quite logically, we previously found that in the seasonally breeding serine hamster, kispeptin expression in the aqueduct nucleus is high in long summer days when the animals are sexually active and low in short winter days when the gonadotropic axis is shut down. However, and quite surprisingly, in the Jungarian hamster, another popular model for seasonal physiology, we and other researchers saw exactly the opposite situation, low levels when the animals are sexually active in summer and high levels in winter. To unravel this discrepancy, we studied castrated Jungarian hamsters in long and short days to analyze kispeptin expression without sex steroid feedback, as well as hamsters that had been supplemented with an identical level of testosterone in both day lengths. Our most important observation was that kispeptin is subject to a tremendous negative sex steroid feedback in long days, leading to the very low levels of kispeptin that we observed and completely masking photoperiodic regulation of kispeptin. This, however, does not explain why the high levels of kispeptin in short days do not activate the gonadotropic axis. Might the gonadotropic axis in this species in short winter days be insensitive to kispeptin? Infusing kispeptin into the cerebral ventricles of short day Jungarian hamsters completely reactivated their gonadotropic axis, which thus is not insensitive to kispeptin. We therefore think that in short winter days, the kispeptin in the aqueduct nucleus is not secreted and thus accumulates to the high levels we and others observed. Understanding how the gonadotropic axis is shut down in winter in these animals must thus now concentrate on mechanisms that shut down the secretory activity of these kispeptin neurons, mechanisms that might be located either within these neurons themselves or upstream of these neurons. I hope this podcast has stimulated your interest in our work. Thank you for watching.